Hi, Joe Alton, MD here, also known as Dr. Bones of the survival medicine website, doomandbloom.net, where you'll find over 1,200 articles, podcasts, and videos on medical preparedness, plus the author of the Survival Medicine Handbook, Alton's Antibiotics and Infectious Disease, and other books, and designer of an entire line of medical kits at store.doomandbloom.net. I've talked about COVID-19, influenza, bacterial respiratory infections on this channel, but I haven't done a video yet on pneumonia. If you follow Doom and Bloom's website, you might remember my article from January 7th, 2020, called A New Pneumonia, which I mentioned a mysterious new illness that affected a grand total of 60 people in a place called Wuhan, China. This time I'm talking about pneumonia for a different reason. I have it right now. More on that later, but let's talk about pneumonia in general. Pneumonia is defined as an inflammation of the lung usually caused by bacterial or viral infection. Occasionally, fungi or parasites may give rise to it. It's a very general term and doesn't identify the specific microbe. Your lungs are part of the respiratory system, the part of the body that controls breathing. Inhaling fresh air brings oxygen to tiny air sacs in the lungs called alveoli. Little blood vessels in the alveoli absorb oxygen from inhaled air and remove waste gases like carbon dioxide during exhalation. This vital process of oxygen in, carbon dioxide out is called gas exchange, and anything that interferes with it can become life-threatening. In pneumonia, the alveoli fill with pus and inflammatory fluid, preventing the proper absorption of oxygen. Milder cases of pneumonia may affect just a small section of the lung, but severe cases may affect the entirety of both lungs, what was once called double pneumonia. Mine's in two areas of the upper lobe on the right side. More than 1.5 million ER visitors receive the diagnosis of pneumonia every year in the U.S., and that's before COVID. Most of these cases are in the elderly, the very young, and those with poor immune systems. With COVID-19, it affected older people the most. Me? My test came back negative, as did tests for influenza and other diseases. It's thought that I might have maybe had some stomach acid go into my windpipe while I was sleeping. Secondary pneumonia tends to be bacterial, with worsening shortness of breath, continued fever, and thicker mucus over the course of time. Like COVID-19 cases, pneumonia may be primary, that is, an occurrence in and of itself, and can occur in an otherwise normal person. It could be secondary, in response to a weakened system due to other infections, heart disease, asthma, diabetes, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, cancer, or even just old age. You can expect to see coughing that produces mucus, sometimes with bloody streaks, that's me. Fever and chills, low grade, up to 100 for me. Fast breathing, no. Fast heart rate, me, up to about 110 for one day only. Shortness of breath, no. Chest pain, no. Exhaustion, me, absolutely me, that was a major issue. Muscle aches, no. Loss of appetite, well, maybe, not really. People with the worst cases may turn blue around the mouth or fingertips, a condition known as cyanosis. Cyanosis is a sign that the body isn't able to transport enough oxygen to the tissues. When you listen to the lungs using a stethoscope, an area with pneumonia often sounds as if somebody was crumpling a piece of paper next to your ear. It could also sound like a fine crackling or even a bubbling sound. This is because of fluid filling up your alveoli. Why I have pneumonia is not known for certain. I'm still in the middle of testing. Many microbes can cause pneumonia, so it may take a while to discover the offending organism, even in normal times and with modern technology. When treating pneumonia, antibiotics are commonly prescribed, but it's important to know that antibiotics work only for bacterial infections, not viral. But that's not uncommon at all in some populations, and so antibiotics are being used in folks like me, people in my age group. I was given metronidazole and levofloxacin, drugs that I've written about before and made videos about before, that preparedness folk use in veterinary equivalents. The choice depends on the microbe involved and the available drugs. Other oral drugs that may help are some I've also talked about on this channel. Amoxicillin, doxycycline, azithromycin, cephalexin, and clindamycin. Occasionally, the organism that causes pneumonia may be a fungus. One example is coccidiomycosis, also known in the American Southwest as valley fever. Symptoms include persistent cough, fever, headaches, fatigue, and shortness of breath. The treatment most often uses the oral antifungal drug fluconazole. Last time I looked, there were still some antifungals available in veterinary form. In cases of influenza, antiviral medications such as Tamiflu, Relenza, or Zofluza will shorten the course of the infection if taken in the first 48 hours after symptoms appear. That's important. After the first 48 hours, less medicinal benefit is noted. 
These drugs are not known to be effective against pneumonia caused by other viruses than influenza, however. Other treatments involve alleviating the symptoms. Acetaminophen, let's say Tylenol, for fever, or guaifenesin, mucinex, for congestion. Cough suppressants may be recommended by some, but aren't always helpful. Coughing helps remove thick mucus and shouldn't be suppressed unless it's so severe that breathing is difficult, causes vomiting, or prevents sleep. I will say from personal experience, the better hydrated I am, the better I feel. So make sure you push fluids. Warm beverages, humidifiers, steam inhalation, they, that may help bring up mucus. That's important too. And make sure you get plenty of rest. And for goodness sake, don't smoke. I believe that attitude is important when it comes to medical problems, and I'm going to be maintaining a positive attitude. I'll be damned if I let this thing beat me. Hopefully, I'll soon get back to writing more articles on medical preparedness, and yes, maybe even a new edition of the Survival Medicine Handbook. Thanks for your best wishes and prayers. This is Joe Alden, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health and good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, please consider supporting our mission to put a medically prepared person in every family by getting some of the quality medical kits individual supplies, and personal protection gear available at store.doomandbloom.net.